Mariah Elizabeth's Pickle the Dinosaur has captured the hearts of many fans, but Cousin Derp inspired me to extend my creativity. I'm talking about a loom knitted version of Pickle's Cousin Derp. In my last video, I unintentionally blew you off by saying I was going to spend the summer making pattern conversions for stitches. Well, I lied. I'm taking an interest in creating loom knitted plushies from Mariah's collection. Before I begin with supplies needed for this project, a huge shout out to Mariah Elizabeth and her ingenious work and positivity. All credit for this idea goes to her. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please thumbs up, subscribe, and comment your thoughts below. Now let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need a 12 peg round loom. If you don't own any of these supplies, then Michaels or Amazon would be great places to buy from. Then you will need super bulky yarn of any brand. I'm using Bernay Blanket Teal. It's a number six, 100% polyester. I would recommend that you use two strands of yarn pulled from the same ball because it reduces stuffing showing through Cousin Derp. Some stuffing, scissors, a yarn needle, and crochet hook will all be super helpful too. If you wanted to add sprinkles to your derp stuffy, then you can add in some rainbow colors. This is completely optional too, but I'm using stuffed animal safety eyes for my cousin derp. I feel like they look more realistic, and if you still want to use yarn to embroider the eyes, then that's totally fine too. But this is something that I would highly recommend doing because it just looks a lot nicer in the end. Start off by making a slipknot. I make my slip knots by wrapping it once around my index finger to form an X. Then I take the top part, pull it over the bottom, and pull the bottom up and through to replace the top. Now secure your slip knot to the anchor peg so that it stays. To cast on the loom, all you are doing is going in between the first and last peg and working to the right in a zigzag fashion. So this is called a drawstring cast on, and basically it'll just form a bottom that can be closed by pulling the string or the yarn. So continue around the loom until you hit the last peg. Now just lay your yarn over the top of your loom to form a second row. When you're finished, brace your yarn against the back of the loom with one hand and with the other use your looming hook to lift that first bottom loop to secure all of the loops. Now you will work backwards, lifting all of the bottom loops of every other peg over that yarn on top. So some pegs will be empty, and that's okay. That one drawstring is going to form a new loop. So continue on around the loom until you get to the starting point. Your cast on is now complete. Notice that one of the pegs is completely empty. That's okay. Now we are going to do an E-wrap. So wrap that first peg, the second, third, and fourth, and so forth, and continue wrapping all of the pegs from back to front like this. This is called an E-wrap because it creates little cursive E's if you look at the loom from the top. So once you get to the end of the loom, you are actually going to lift that bottom loop again and go backwards, the opposite direction you went. So lift all of those double-stranded loops over the top loops, making sure that you're catching every single loop, and keep going. After each row, it's important that you push down all of your loops so that you can make more room for your new ones. This is row two, and how we determine rows on looms is that if you go past your anchor peg, which is the peg that we tied our loop on, basically that makes one row. So I'm doing a second row here. The goal is to create three rows. So I will meet you back here when you have knitted three rows. Remember, this is all e-wrapping completely. We're not doing any stitch that could be potentially hard for a beginner. Don't forget to remove that anchor peg loop because it will tighten up on your project. Just pull it through the bottom of your loom. This is what everything should be looking like after you have completed your three rows, and now it's time to move on to the legs. I noticed Cousin Derp has some extremely stubby legs. For this pattern, the goal is to imitate derps, well, derpy legs, to make this stuffy look almost exactly like the squishy with slight differences. Start by e-wrapping three pegs. These will be the first three on your loom. Then e-wrap the next three pegs, or pegs four to six in this case. Now stay on this group of three pegs for a while, and if you need to mark your pegs, I would suggest using washi tape to mark them with. We're going to start working flat, which is a fancy word for knitting back and forth versus going in the same direction circularly. Turn around on peg three and lay the yarn over, then e-wrap the other two normally. This will be row two, actually. 
How I keep track of my flat rows is by knowing that if I'm knitting to the left, that's the even row, so I'm on an even number. Knit right for row 3, then continue back and forth for 9 rows. You should end up right where you began. Here is my last row, and I'm going to end up on the right side with my working yarn, like I said, so I'll just lift up these loops. Once you've completed 9 rows, e-wrap to the next 3 pegs, which would be pegs 7, 8, and 9. Again, we're working another leg by e-wrapping flat, so lay the yarn over that turning peg and knit row 2. Keep wrapping and lifting for 9 rows, just like the previous 3 pegs. When you've completed your last 9 rows of the second leg, then it's time to e-wrap back to your original starting point, which is 3 more pegs over. And those are your Ickle Derpy legs. We will repeat them for the front legs later. Aww, look at that little bottom. For the body, e-wrap circularly again for 8 rows total. Remember that Derp is the stubbier cousin, so he'll end up having a shorter body that still doesn't quite proportionize with those legs. Pause the video to complete all 8 rows and meet me back here. Cousin Derp's body is now complete, so we will repeat the same exact leg process that I just showed you. So if you do need a reminder, rewind the video and go back to that, and I will meet you to the neck area once you have finished your legs. Last thing we have to do before we bind off is knit two rows for the neck. Derp's neck needs to be barely noticeable because his neck is hardly there, if at all, on the squishy. Mind the stubbiness. So e-wrap two rows circularly. After we have a bit of separation from the front legs, it's time to bind off. Binding off is securing our work before removing it from the loom as we empty the pegs. For this bind off, I'm just using the standard version. E-wrap knit the first two pegs. Take the second loop off of its peg and move it to the first. This will create two loops again, so knit over that bottom loop and move the loop to the right peg. The first peg is empty now. Normally, this cast off shouldn't be too tight, but I'm not concerned if it happens to be snug, since we're sewing the head on anyway. Don't have a crazy tight tension here. We don't want the fat little head on a stick of a neck. Just be normal with the yarn here. It won't bite. Again, only e-wrap one peg at this point and move the right loop backwards to the left. Lift the new bottom loop over, move it to the right, and knit it. Keep repeating this process until you have one loop left on the loom, and I'll meet you back here. So I just finished my bind off, and I only have one loop left. So now what you will do is you will wrap your yarn around the loom once, and then pull out some extra tail for sewing up. Then you will cut that tail, and we're going to lift that one loop on the peg completely off. Grab your looming hook or a crochet hook. I usually use a crochet hook, but this time I used my fingers and I just pry that loop off the peg and pull the project through upwards. And this is how you will be able to release it. I know he's looking a little mangled, but we'll fix him up. Because it's usually really difficult to sew with two strands of yarn, I wanna narrow it down to one strand. So I use a double knot right here, and then I will cut a piece of the tail and stuff it inside the stuffed animal. You will learn that stuffed animals look pretty ugly on the inside with all those different pieces of tails and yarns inside, but I like to think of them as the internal organs. Before I move on to the head, I'll first sew up the bottom legs and any holes. You don't have to know how to sew when you do this. Just attach your yarn needle to the original tail and sew the drawstring hole closed. Proceed to sewing the open sides of the legs, then secure and cut any excess yarn. I'll show you how to stuff once the head is completed. This just gets the most time-consuming part out of the way. This is what Cousin Derp looks like with his feet sewn up. Grab your stuffing and we are going to start stuffing the body and legs. I feel like a lot of loom knitted stuffed animal tutorials don't really go over stuffing your stuffed animal in detail. So really quickly I will show you how I do my stuffed animals and basically all I do is I take small amounts and start stuffing the crevices, the hard to reach places where thick amounts of stuffing are going to bypass. So go into those crevices, notches, holes, and just 
keep stuffing the stuffing inside, but you will have to use a lot more stuffing than you planned. Stuffing a stuffed animal is called stuffing for a reason. You are making these stuffed animals way heavier than they are, and you are making them plumper and fatter and shaping, so there's a huge process to it. So watch as I move the stuffing around by pressing the outside of the body and then going inside, and at one point I did end up using my crochet hook to stuff little areas that I couldn't reach with my fingers because Cousin Derp's body was getting a little out of control and it was hard for me to get my hands inside. So I ended up using the crochet hook to just jam everything in there and just keep piling stuffing in and pushing down till it starts fighting you and springing back and that means you put in plenty. If you want Cousin Derp to be super fat, then you can by all means go and shape the sides and fill up areas of the stuffing. So whatever you want to do, it's your stuffed animal. Remember that this cousin derp is not going to look as beautiful as Mariah Elizabeth's. It's going to appear a lot more realistic, especially with the color I used, but you can still shape and make a lot more of the character with the stuffing. So take your time. It's a time-consuming process, but once you get past the body, then we can go on to the head. <music> For this particular part of the tutorial, I am actually working flat, which means back and forth, like we did with the legs of Cousin Derp. Make that slip knot again and attach it to your anchor peg on the outside of your loom. How would we do a drawstring cast on flat? Well, it's super simple. So what you will do instead of going in between the first middle pegs is you are going to go in front of peg one instead of in between peg one and the last peg and then you will start zigzagging like normal. We do this because we have to turn around on the last peg somehow and still be able to lift up that loop. So keep going around the entire loom. Now you will turn around like I was saying. So you're laying that yarn over that last peg and then you're coming back and laying all of your yarn over to form that second layer. And continue on until you get to that first peg again. You are going to lift up all of those loops. So the bottoms over the tops and you're securing that first piece of yarn. Then you're going back and you will secure it all the way to the last piece. Remember that there's going to be alternating pegs with two loops on them. So you're only lifting the pegs with two and skipping the ones that only have one loop, which is caused from the drawstring. So it's that simple. It's just a slight difference. And I will meet you at the beginning of your loom again. Now e-wrap flat for four rows. Then stop and I'll meet you back for the next instruction. Here I e-wrapped flat for four rows, so I ended up back where I began in the beginning, so that's where you should be, and we just went back and forth, just like the legs. This is the only part of the project that does get complicated. We will be doing something called a sock decrease on the loom, but if you follow along you should be able to stay with me. So. Pretend that we're getting ready to prep for those leg rows and knit those first three pegs as seen here. Then knit the next six pegs. So we're working two groups of three at the same time instead of one group of three. Now secure your yarn by e-wrapping that last peg and working backwards. Stay on these six pegs. If you need to have stitch markers or tape to mark your stitches, then that would really be a good idea. Now you will e-wrap over one peg. So this is peg seven. So you're e-wrapping that peg as a turning peg, then you're going back and e-wrapping the other six normally. So this is called a increase. So we're increasing, then we're decreasing like a sock heel. So you will knit all of these over except for peg seven. Do not e-wrap that last loop you just started with. You added a loop in, okay? but do not knit it. Leave it alone and pretend you are still on those six pegs. That's why I said stay on the six pegs because technically you will be staying on that group. So do not knit that seventh peg. Now, again, you are going to increase by taking another outside peg, which is peg three, and wrapping it around and then going backwards to your original pegs. So again, you wrap the rest, but when you go back to knit that last loop you just did, do not knit it. Do not knit peg three, do not knit peg seven. Stay on those six that you have in the middle. But as you increase and decrease, you will have a few that you actually have to narrow in. So do not touch those outside pegs. Now we will increase one more time on each side. 
So you again are going to wrap around the sixth peg. So peg six, you're going to wrap around and turn on it. And then you will e-wrap the rest normally except for peg three. But now when you go back to e-wrap, do not knit peg six or peg seven. And do not knit peg three, okay? That's where stitch markers really do come in handy. And I pretty much am making this pretty confusing. So just look at what I'm doing and do not knit those last two pegs. Now the pegs with loops on them are peg three and peg four and peg six and seven. The ones in between, which I believe are four, you do knit those normally. So I just finished lifting the bottom loops of my last row. So again, go to the right as if you're doing a normal row, but instead you will be adding in one peg, which is one of those double looped pegs on the bottom. So we are e-wrapping five pegs. The goal here is to add in those double looped strands underneath each loop, one row at a time. So turn around on the peg before and e-wrap backwards to the left. Then again, you will lift a bottom loop of double loops over the top loop. Now you get the idea. So move to the right and knit until you hit that last double stranded loop and lift it completely over, then lift your other bottom loops. Then for the last time, you will turn to the left and do that last double stranded loop then turn back around and knit the rest of all of the pegs. You only have two pegs that will finish up your row. So all you're doing is you're knitting to the right again and going to those last two pegs and that will complete the most complicated row of this pattern. All we need to do now is e-wrap backwards since we are working flat and we are going to e-wrap one row total. Meet me back when you're done with that one row. That's all there is to Cousin Derp's head, so we are going to bind off using the drawstring cast off flat method. So wrap your yarn around the loom once, then pull out a little bit more yarn and cut it with some scissors or these handy dandy yarn clippers. Then you will take your looming hook and go down from the top of the loop under and grab that yarn underneath and pull it all the way through to secure it to the peg. So this is what the drawstring means. Go back down as if to purl and grab that loop, but instead of just grabbing a certain amount of the loop, just continue to pull it through until it's all the way through. Then go down into the next loop and keep repeating this. So all the way around the loom you will do this, and what it does is it just creates a closed area for us to work with when we sew. So then, once you have finished this cast off, then you can take off all the loops on the peg and pull the project up and through, just like we did with Cousin Derp's body. So here we have the lonely Cousin Derp's head, but don't worry, we'll fix it. So what I'm doing here is I'm tying a double knot with the two strands released from the loom, and what I usually do is I cut one of those strands and stuff the other strand into Cousin Derp so that it cannot be seen in the stuffed animal. And I just do that because it's a lot easier to work with one strand and just sew that up versus two double strands. So again, I'll do that with the top part and I will do a double knot. Then I will clip one of those strands of yarn and stuff it inside when it comes to be that time. So I'm going to continue doing some things like that. I will look for holes, investigate the project a little bit, check it out. You can see here that I also made a huge mistake. Somehow I got this huge hole and that must have been caused from the decrease. That always happens with sock decreases, but it looks like I missed a stitch. So this is not a problem. I can easily fix it and repair it. If you have something similar like this, all you have to do is take your yarn needle through there and just kind of patch it up. It's not hard, you'll figure out how to do it, and if you need to reattach a different piece of yarn, you basically just attach that to your needle, then tie it to the fabric underneath and sew it. 
So one mistake I did make too is I didn't really sew this project as much as I could inside out. I mostly focused on the outside of the project, so there were a few things that were showing, but I eventually fixed that in the end. So it's all up to you, however you'd like to sew it. What I'm doing first is I'm sewing the bottom jawline first and just getting enough room to put some stuffing in there. So once you have created a hole that will work well enough that's small, then you can start sticking the stuffing in and just getting it in all those little crevices like I showed you with the body. With Cousin Derp's head, what you want to really pay attention to is making it as plump and squashy looking as possible. So I will show you how to make it look really squashy, but first, you need to get all that stuffing in there and continue to randomly sew it up like I am. I'm not a expert sewer. I barely really know how to sew. So when it comes to yarn and yarn needles, all I really do is I just keep doing this and wrapping it around over and over again until I've sealed up the entire jawline and then I'll start stuffing it. So here we have Cousin Derp's head. It has been completely stuffed. I only have a small opening left to sew up, but before I work on that, I'm going to squash the head down. To do this, you will drag the yarn through the top of the head down to the bottom and tie it off, and it's going to create this tension on the yarn, and you'll do it a few times to make sure the yarn doesn't snap, and what I'm first going to do is I will start squashing it the way I want with my hands and just seeing how it would appear and make that frog-like pouchiness to it. And the sock heel decrease helped us a little bit with that. So go in as if you are sewing everything up and just sew a little bit of that bottom part. Then you are going to go through the sides like this. And what that's doing as you squish it down is it's holding that in place. So I'm just going to be going all over the place at this point. I just zigzag throughout the fabric and just keep pressing it and holding that shape. And then I go through the top and then back down to the bottom and I pull tight. I might bind off at some point with my yarn, but I'm just going to keep squeezing it tightly and weaving my yarn in and out as I hold it in shape. And what this does is it just creates the squashy look that I want. So continue doing this, and at one point you will tie everything off as tightly as you can when you have run out of tail, and this should be enough to get it to squash down, just enough for it to look more like Cousin Derp. This is what my head is looking like once I have squashed it down enough. It's not going to be perfect, but I do like it this way. It just adds a little bit of that character. Let's move on to sewing on the head. Yikes, I know, but we'll get them fixed up. So the first thing is sewing on the head. And what I usually do with my stuffed animals is I just make sure that it's as straight as possible. You want it to be on there and not be lopsided unless that's the look you're going for. And I'm just going to make sure that that nose, those two little braids in the front just line up right in between those two front legs. So what I do is I grab my tail yarn, and this is after, of course, where I bound it off and used only one strand, like I showed you with the head, and I'm just threading it through my yarn needle and getting ready to sew the head on. Now, I would advise using the neck yarn area first for the head because it'll work a lot better for you. And starting from the back where we bound off, I'm going to begin taking my needle through and just finding two random bottom loops closer to the nape of the neck. So as I line it up here, I'm just going to look really quickly and I found a few strands that I can take and then I'm going to find a few other strands and again I'm going through that little nape of the neck line. I don't really know what to call it but you're going to see a little seam starting to form there and I just go through the top and then I loop back around and I just keep going. So there's really no particular way to sew up Cousin Derp's head. Really there isn't. I'm just showing you exactly what I do to do it because you might need a reference and everybody has their own preference. Oh my gosh, there he is with his little eyes and I did not safely put them in. So they're not really that easy to put in on the inside out. But look at him, he is on the derpy side, but I do really like this version of Cousin Derp. Oh my goodness, he's just so cute. I know he doesn't look as cute as Mariah Elizabeth's Cousin Derp. He's definitely a very different shade of color, but this was the closest I could possibly get to a light blue with Bernay, so I hope that I can find one that's in stock next time. But I do like this version a lot. 
he's just he's adorable i'm sorry and i know that if you were really going for the same exact look that mariah elizabeth was going for you might be disappointed with this tutorial but i do hope that you try it out and try different alternations or variations and different patterns with it mix and match do please give me credit for the pattern if you do happen to use it in a video or a tutorial because i would like people to know that i made it at the same time, I give full credit to Mariah Elizabeth, of course, for giving me this idea. I will try to do more squishy pattern remakes with this loom knitting technique that I have tried, and I will definitely be releasing those again. Watch out for more videos, and please make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you so much, and Rayalite Knits out!